Dividend investing is a great way to make passive income every single month, but it can unfortunately take many years, even decades for investors to live off those dividends. So today we're going to discuss the fastest way that you can retire early and enjoy the fruits of your investment portfolio. But do bear in mind the fastest way isn't necessarily the best way, but more on that a little bit later. Now for those of you guys who are new around here, my name is Mitch, I post all kinds of videos on stock market investing, so if you do enjoy content like that, be sure to subscribe to the channel. With that being said, let's begin. Okay, so let's talk dividend investing. It's a type of investment strategy that provides a source of income, which is typically paid on a quarterly basis. But if you actually combine a couple of different investments together, you can actually get paid on a monthly basis, just like you would for your salary. Now, the way this works is when you buy shares in a company, those companies like to provide a return on investment to their shareholders. And one of the ways that they can look to do that is actually to pay out a portion of their profit back to their shareholders via the means of a dividend. Now this is commonly expressed as either a dividend per share, which is how much money you receive for each share in the company that you own, or a dividend yield, which shows how much a company pays out in dividends each year relative to its stock price. But the general rule of thumb here is the more shares that you own and the higher the dividend yield, the more income that you'll receive. And I'll talk you through some examples of how that works in practice in just a moment's time. But one thing I will say is Warren Buffett is a huge advocate of dividend investing. And rather impressively, he actually makes six billion dollars annually in pure passive income just from his dividend payments. So how can you guys follow in Warren Buffett's footsteps and actually make enough from dividends that you can live off? Well, it's a rather crucial question that we must have the answer to. So let's talk about how much you actually need to live off dividends. Now, of course, this is obviously individual to everybody watching this video, but a study by Nimblefins actually suggested that the average UK household spends £2,907 a month, which is the equivalent to about £35,000 per year. Now, of course, your expenses may differ, so you might need to adjust that number slightly based on your own financial habits. But I would certainly have a think about what the ideal lifestyle would look like for you. Are you okay with having just enough in dividend payments to cover your bills, or would you like a little bit extra in order to allow you to travel and live a little bit more of a luxurious lifestyle? So once you've got that number figured out, now let's talk about what you can actually invest into, because there are a handful of different options out there. Firstly, you've got stocks. As I referred to previously, companies pay out a portion of their profits to shareholders via a dividend. And actually, you've got a collection of companies that are also referred to as dividend aristocrats. These are a list of companies that have consecutively increased their dividend payouts to shareholders for 25 years or more. Companies like Coca-Cola who have increased their dividend for 60 consecutive years and paid out a total of 46 cents in dividends per share earlier this month, which is the equivalent to a dividend yield of 2.92%. The second option is ETFs. Now, an exchange traded fund is a collection of stocks all in one single investment vehicle. They're designed to diversify your investment portfolio and reduce your single company risk. There are lots of different ETFs out there, but one of the most common ones is the Vanguard FTSE All World High Dividend Yielding ETF with the ticker symbol VHYL. It's a collection of 1,769 stocks full of lots of different dividend paying companies from all around the world that currently pays a dividend of 41 cents per share, which is the equivalent to a 3.79% yield. Third option is through a real estate investment trust. Now, if you ever wanted to own a cash flowing real estate, but without actually physically owning the property and having to deal with annoying tenants, well, a real estate investment trust is a very good option for you. Because get this, over in the United States, REITs are actually required to pay out 90% of their profits to shareholders, which makes it a really attractive, high dividend paying investment. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah. A really popular example of this is Realty Income Corporation, who pay 25 cents per share, the equivalent to a 5.04% dividend yield. Now, all of those examples that I just gave were fairly modest dividend paying investments. But what is the absolute fastest way in order to live off that income? Well, it's pretty simple. You either need to invest in a stock, ETF, REIT, or a mixture of the three that have the highest paying dividend yield. The higher the dividend yield, the more money that you receive in dividends per pound or dollar invested. But as I said at the top of the video, the fastest way isn't always the best because there are some major risks associated with it, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment's time. But let's say you really hate your job and all you really care about is retiring as soon as humanly possible. In which case, let's talk about the fastest way that you can achieve this. And there's probably no better place to start than actually talk about the highest paying 
dividend yielding stock in the FTSE 100, which is a company called M&G, who actually pay a whopping dividend yield of 10.02%. Meaning in practice, if you had £10,000 invested in M&G, then you'd get just over £1,000 per year in dividend payments. Now, if that were to be the only investment that you ever made, how long would it actually take you to be able to actually afford to live off those dividends, assuming that you needed to achieve household income of £35,000 to match up with your expenses. Well, let's jump onto the tip ranks calculator in order to actually calculate how long this would take. Let's say that you started from scratch and invested the equivalent to £195.65, which is actually the equivalent of £19,565. Now, don't ask, but all UK companies are listed in pence rather than pounds and pence. It's a little bit annoying, but stick with me as I'll work through the conversions with you. Now, let's say that we invested the equivalent to £200 per month, which would be £2,400 per year or 240,000 pence. And let's also assume that dividends are expected to increase by 2% per year. And as well, the price of the shares will also go up by 2% per year too. We're also gonna execute on something called a dividend reinvestment program, which is whereby you actually reinvest those dividends back into more shares within the company to trigger the compound effect to speed this whole process up. And let's say that you did all this within a stocks and shares ISA account, which is completely tax free. Well, here are the results. After five years, you would have received £1,380 per year in dividends. After year 10, you'd be receiving £4,982 per year. But as I said, the compound effect really does accelerate quickly. So actually, after year 20, you'd have eight times the dividend that you received in year 10, and you actually would have achieved that £35,000 per year in dividends. So there you have it, invest £200 a month in MNG for 20 years, and you'd be able to retire. But how can you speed this process up so it doesn't take all too much time? Well, one of the only ways that you can actually do this is to increase the amount of money that you're investing. If we invested say £500 a month instead, it would actually only take you 15 years to retire, trimming five years off your retirement date. Now, as I said earlier, these types of high yielding investments are of course the fastest way to retire off your dividends but that doesn't mean that they're the best investments that you can make because investing in a single high dividend paying stock has some risks associated with it that you should definitely be aware of. Firstly, there's likely to be a low growth in the stock price. Ideally, when investing, investors are looking for growth in share price along with growth in dividends too. It means the value of your portfolio will continue to grow whilst being able to draw an income from it. But with some extremely high dividend paying stocks, they struggle to execute on both. M&G, as an example, has a five-year return on investment of negative 13.08%, meaning a £10,000 investment 10 years ago today would actually be worth £8,700. So the value of your investment portfolio would actually be lower. But of course, when accounting for dividends, you would have actually received about £5,000 in dividends during that period, which I guess somewhat offsets the losses. But nonetheless, it's a risk to reward paradigm that you definitely need to be aware of. The second risk is poor company performance. Some companies pay so much out to shareholders with dividends that it comes at the expense of their future growth. Because instead of reinvesting that profit back into the business, they're paying it out to shareholders instead, which I guess is fine for some cash rich businesses, but not so fine for those who aren't. And M&G is one of those stocks that has some quite concerning financials, especially over the past few years, to the point where they've gone from actually making a profit of 1.1 billion pounds per year to now making a loss of 1.6 billion pounds, along with massively declining revenues too. That to me would be a massive red flag as an investor that relies on dividends as a sole investment strategy for long-term investment returns. The third risk is limited future dividend growth. When a dividend yield is already so high, it limits the company's ability to continue to increase that dividend over time. And actually, believe it or not, some companies will actually pay out all of their profits and more to their shareholders just to appease them. Well, Outria Group, as an example, have a dividend payout ratio of 115%, meaning they literally have to borrow money or raise capital to pay out the additional 15% on top of the 100% of the profits that they already pay out to shareholders. That strategy to me very much feels unsustainable and it would be one that I'd be concerned about as an investor within that company. So with those red flags that you should be aware of, hopefully that's made it quite clear that the fastest way 
isn't necessarily the best, which kind of begs the question, well, what is the best strategy to execute on? Well, for me, I think it's important to invest in a well-diversified collection of stocks that are cash rich and financially stable. I'd potentially take a look at the dividend aristocrats that have consistently paid dividends over the past 25 years or more, because these companies are in an elite group of dividend paying stocks that certainly don't want to lose such prestigious status. As an example, you've got stocks like Procter & Gamble who've increased their dividend in the past 66 years and have a sound dividend yield of 2.49%, a five-year return on investment of 104.6%, but also have stable and growing financials too. Or if you're not too much of the individual stock investor, well, you can certainly look towards ETFs like VHYL. This type of fund will allow you to have a partial weighted allocation towards lots of different high dividend paying companies but without having to take on that single company risk factor. The key point that I'd like to call out here is that any investment that you make should be accompanied by proper research and good quality due diligence and ensuring that the underlying fundamentals of that business also remain strong to give you confidence as an investor that they will be able to continue to pay you out good quality dividends over time, along with in an ideal world be able to provide you with a long-term return on investment on the value of the money that you've invested into that company. From doing proper research and due diligence, Warren Buffett actually makes $704 million per year in dividend payments from his investment in Coca-Cola. And for that, he literally doesn't have to lift a finger. That's 32 times more than what the CEO of Coca-Cola makes and he has to run the whole damn business. So the moral of the story here is don't be the boss, be the investor in a cash rich, high dividend paying company that can pay you good, sound, quality dividends over time to allow you to achieve financial freedom and retire early. Now, if you'd like to know a little bit more about my personal investment strategy, then I recommend that you click on this video next. But before you go, be sure to subscribe to the channel on the way out. And with that being said, I'll see you over there.